This is the Christian Circle Podcast and you're listening to Pamela Fernandez where we have conversations about Christian living. Here's the show. Welcome to a new episode of the Christian Circle Podcast. So today for the season of Advent in the month of December, we have a new guest. We have Mr. Ralph Martin, who's going to talk to us about the coming of Jesus. Now, he wrote a book called Is Jesus Coming Soon? A Catholic Perspective on the Second Coming way back in 97. Mr. Martin, tell us a little bit about yourself and your ministry. Yeah, well, I'm speaking here from Ann Arbor, Michigan, and I teach at Sacred Heart Seminary in the Archdiocese of Detroit. I'm uh, the director of the Graduate Theology Programs in Evangelization. And I also am president of a Catholic mission organization called Renewal Ministries, where we have a a weekly TV program on EWTN, which is actually the longest running Catholic television program called The Choices We Face. We have two daily Catholic radio programs, and we have a YouTube channel, uh, and we also uh, do a lot of mission work. We, we worked in over 30 countries last year, uh, just trying to help strengthen the church and you know, really all over the world. So uh, that's that's who I am. I'm married. I have six children. I have 19 grandchildren. And I uh, just get up every day and try to do what I'm supposed to do in loving and serving the Lord. Well, that's great. So um, you wrote this book in 97, and um, we are now in the season of Advent. And I know that Advent is a very Catholic concept. I was listening to K-Love Radio the other day, and they were trying to tell you know all their Christian people what the concept of Advent is. Is Jesus coming again? And what is the evidence of this biblically that we have, especially with relationship to Advent? Yeah, well, you know, one of the one of the reasons why I wrote that book, and I'm actually planning to revise it, you know, next year, is because every year at Advent as a Catholic, I hardly hear anybody, any priest or deacon ever talk about the return of the Lord. Mm. And, and the beginning of the Advent season is all about that. Yeah. So we're not, we're not just like preparing for Christmas to celebrate the first coming of the Lord, but we're actually trying to prepare ourselves to receive the Lord when he comes again in glory. Mm -hmm. uh, this time, not just as a sacrificial lamb, take away the sins of the world, but returning in glory as king and judge. Yeah. And so uh, there's just so much clear in scripture revealed to us about both the first coming of the Lord, but also that he's coming again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And he's going to judge us on the basis of how we responded to his sacrifice on the cross and his resurrection from the dead. So there's this uh, distinction. I mean, we had um, at the beginning of Advent, we had the older priests, you know, the old school priest who was talking about how we should stop preparing just for this Christmas and buying gifts and all this stuff and focus on getting ready for heaven um, and booking our tickets there. So is Jesus coming in our hearts or is he physically returning back to rule on the earth he's doing both uh he wants right now to be living and dwelling in us he says if you love me the father and i will come and dwell with you in john's gospel and he wants to be our friend our brother our lord right now every day in our life but he is physically returning in a visible way when nobody will be able to mistake him mm -hmm. and and he's going to come to uh wrap up human history he's going to come to bring to an end all the suffering, all the sorrow, all the sin, all the evil. And those who have refused to believe and repent in him are going to find themselves excluded from the kingdom of God. So there's just a lot in the scripture about the Lord's return. So why is this important for uh, everyday Christians? Because um, I know that uh, a lot of people will say, okay, well, he's coming. We've been hearing this for thousands of years. And then, um, you know, one day is a thousand years for the Lord and in right. a thousand days is, is a year. So why does it matter to everyday Christians? Like, why should it even matter? Well, why it matters is that we need to realize we need to live our life in such a way that if the Lord came today, mm -hmm. we'd hear those wonderful words from him, well done, good and faithful servants. Yeah. But if we're living in a different way, and Jesus, you know, many times in his parable saying, if the, if the master returns mm. and finds you goofing off, he finds you not using the gifts he gave you, find you mistreating people, it's going to go bad for you. Mm. And so Jesus says, yes, nobody knows the day or the hour, but it's certainly going to happen. 
And you need to be strengthened by the knowledge that is certainly going to happen to live every day because it could happen any day. And for each of us, the Lord's return or encountering the judgment of God is going to happen on the day of our death. And we yeah. could die any time. You know, none of us has any guarantee about how much longer we're going to live, whether we have good genetics or actual aerial table or uh, we're in perfect health. We could die at any moment. So we have to be ready every day to, to meet the Lord. And what are the signs of his coming, basically, the the, the actual physical coming? Because we're yep. seeing a, a lot of uh, end signs. We've been seeing this for years. And a lot of people will argue that, yeah, well, there have always been wars. They have always been, well, things are getting pretty bad. So what are the signs of the Lord yeah. coming? Well, there's there's a number of signs very specifically you know, spoken about in Scripture. Some of the most striking ones are in Second Thessalonians chapter 2, where Paul says, don't be alarmed by supposed prophecies that say the Lord has already come or he's mm -hmm. going about to come today because mm -hmm. two things need to happen before the Lord returns. The first thing he says, the Lord hasn't returned yet because the great apostasy has not yet happened. Mm -hmm. So what's an apostasy? An apostasy isn't something that pagans do. It's something that Christians do. Mm -hmm. It's a turning away from faith on the part of those who once had faith. And so... We are certainly seeing a great apostasy in our day. Yeah. You know, all the traditional Christian and Catholic countries, uh, almost every single one of them is in the process of repudiating yeah. their links to Christ, their their respect for God, their, their respect for the Ten Commandments. So we are seeing a very great apostasy, whether it's the final apostasy or not. Quite honestly, we won't know until we see whether the Lord returns to put mm -hmm. down all the evil and all the rebellion. The second sign that Paul says needs to happen before the Lord returns in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, he says there's a certain thing holding back evil. He calls it a restrainer. But he says at a certain point, that restrainer on evil is going to be removed, and you're going to see unrestrained evil. You're going to see unrestrained lawlessness, and you're going to see the appearance of the lawless one who most people feel like is a reference to the Antichrist. Mm. Now, the good news is that when all that happens, the Lord himself is going to intervene and slay the Antichrist with the breath of his mouth, with his word, and mm. usher in the second coming, the, the kingdom. But there's more things told to us there in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It says many people are going to be deceived. Mm. The Antichrist is going to use every means at his disposal to to draw people away from Christ. And it says that those who are destined to perish. And when I first read that, I said, what? There's people who are destined to perish? Well, we know from First Timothy chapter 2 that God wants the salvation of the whole human race. But who's destined to perish? That Paul talks about in Second Thessalonians chapter 2. It's those who refuse to open their hearts and love the truth. So it's so important right now that people open their hearts to the gospel, open their hearts to the person of Christ, open their hearts to the truth that's revealed to us. Because it says, if we don't do that, even a deeper darkness is going to come upon us that it's almost impossible to return from. And we're certainly seeing in our culture today a, a remarkable hostility to Christ and the church or yeah. remarkable dark deception that so many people are under and it's, uh, you know, it's very sobering. You know, these are signs that Paul says is going to happen before the Lord returns. You just have to ask yourself the question, are are these the signs? Mm -hmm. And honestly, we won't know until we see whether the Lord returns or not. But it sure looks like things get a lot worse before they get better. So actually, these are, um, in a way, pretty uh, dark signs, right? And they would instill fear in somebody who's not actually rooted rooted in the faith or who does not believe that you know the holy spirit lives within them uh what would you say to people who have this fear and who are in in constant fear of this this judgment or in the fear of, yeah. of the coming of the lord or even of their own death yeah well in john chapter 11 jesus is coming to raise lazarus from the dead mm -hmm. and he's talking to martha one of lazarus's two sisters and he says to her point blank, I am the resurrection and the life. And somebody who believes in me, even if they die, won't die. Mm -hmm. So Jesus is actually 
offered his life and been raised from the dead so that we don't have to fear death if we're in relationship with him. Mm -hmm. So uh, Jesus is promising us that even if we die on this earth, biological death, we're going to live forever with him because of our faith in him, because being baptized, because being joined to him, because we're part of his body and we're one spirit, one body with him, as it says in Corinthians, that we belong to him, we're his. So we're going to share in his resurrection, just like we share in his death. Mm -hmm. And so I would say to somebody who's living in fear of the judgment, hey, get to know the love of God, draw near to him. You know, scripture says perfect love cast out fear yeah. and we are perfectly loved by god but we need to respond to that love with our own love with our own obedience with our own faith so if somebody wants to prepare right now how do they prepare during this time of advent for his coming in their hearts and then how do they sustain this preparation for his coming uh in the future because a lot of times we prepare for advent christmas comes goes and then we go back to whatever we're doing with our lives and then Easter comes and we stop preparing for Lent. And then again, we go back to our regular stuff. Um, right. the Lord is just, you know, sidelined there. So how do we prepare for Advent and sustain that for his actual coming? Well, I, I think the number one priority for us today is to recover our confidence in the inspiration and inerrancy of sacred scripture. Mm. A lot of people have lost their confidence in scripture. Like, Gee, I don't know Greek or Hebrew. How can I understand it? Mm -hmm. You know, I've heard sort of different theories that, well, Jesus didn't really say this, but the early church made it up and things like that. Mm -hmm. But but for Catholics, Vatican II published a whole document on how us Catholics need to approach sacred scripture. Mm -hmm. And 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 it's a whole whole document called Dei Verbum and Divine Revelation. And what it says is that the primary author of sacred scripture is God. Mm. you know so that's that's a book we want to read yeah and he says that he works through human instruments he works through people through their own culture their own mentality their own language mm. but what he inspires them to teach is being taught by god himself mm. and then section 11 of that document says everything asserted by the sacred authors should be considered to be asserted by the holy spirit yeah and to teach faithfully firmly and without error those truths which God decided to consign to the sacred writings for the sake of our salvation. So our salvation depends on believing the word of God mm -hmm. and receiving it as the word of God. Like St. Paul said in uh, Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, this is not a human word. This is God's word. Yeah. And so we just have to really value and treasure sacred scripture. And what I would really recommend to everybody as a year-round practice <laughs> is I think we really need to take some time each day for personal prayer mm -hmm. and meditation on the Word of God. And for Catholics, just even meditating on the uh, daily scripture readings, that monthly magazine that many people get called Magnificat that has the morning prayer and evening prayer and the scripture mm -hmm. readings each day. Just uh, taking some time each day to be with the Lord, to pay attention to Him, to be in His presence, and then to meditate on His Word in a prayerful way, not just kind of like, understanding with our minds but opening our hearts to the one who's speaking to us through scripture and so i think you know saint francis de sales one of the first catholic saints that wrote a book for lay people on spirituality said he'd recommend that catholic lay people don't pray longer than an hour a day mm -hmm. uh, and unless their spiritual director says it's okay because he didn't want them to neglect their lay responsibilities mm -hmm. And I know most people, when they hear that, are shocked because they wouldn't dream of praying an hour a day. But if, if people aren't used to praying an hour a day, it'd be really good to start somewhere, take 10 or 15 minutes a day and mm -hmm. just be quiet. Like, like, like one of the Psalms says, be still and know that he's God. Because unless we're paying attention to God, we're not going to be in the kind of situation where he can give us the wisdom or guidance we need mm -hmm. as we face challenges and questions in our own life. And I think there's uh, never been a better time than now. We're, we're inundated with, you know, the internet and, and all these ways that you can focus on scripture, you can learn it, you can really dwell and study the word of God. Uh, there's so many resources online. Um, mm -hmm. So that's that's one aspect. What about teaching this to um, children, our teenagers, uh, our youth? Um how do we get them into this preparation mode? Well, we, we have to be, like like St. Peter says, 
be ready to give a reason for the hope that you have. Well, the reason why I'm hopeful is not because I'm optimistic or wishful thinking. The reason why I'm hopeful is because I hope that the resurrection of Jesus Christ will be mine as well, and that death won't be the end, that sin won't be the end, that the devil's deception won't be the end. So my hope is based on the fact and the reality that Jesus has raised, risen from the dead and has promised that to us too, if we're faithful to him. So people say, you know, Ralph, why are you joyful or why are you a believer? I'll, I'll just tell them about who Jesus is. I'll tell them about my own experience of mm -hmm. drifting away from him, even though I was raised in a Catholic family. And when I got to the university, I started to drift away. And then I made a weekend retreat. And on that weekend retreat, I I really ex experienced his presence. I knew I needed to make a decision about whether to admit that he existed, that he was real. And if he, that's the case, I needed to follow him. And so I think um, just being willing to, to give a reason for your own faith, for your own hope, look for opportunities to do that. Now, if you're parents, you have a you know greater responsibility and you really have to really model in your own lives mm -hmm. uh, that Jesus is the most important person in your life. You really need to let your children know that you're not just making them to go to go to mass or making them, you know, go to confirmation class and then they don't need to go to mass after that, which unfortunately is often the case in this mm -hmm. country and other countries. But you need to be like living with Jesus every day in your family, introducing your children to family prayer. So, you know, prayer before and after meals and things like that. And uh, you can't guarantee that, that young people are going to believe and come to the Lord, but you need to do your part in giving them opportunities, giving them a witness in your own life. And one of the things that really seems to be true is that if you get a young person away for a weekend retreat, mm -hmm. there's a much better chance that they're going to kind of disconnect from the Internet a lot of these retreats require them to turn in their phones mm -hmm. so they actually can be filling their minds and hearts with something different than what the world's giving them. Mm -hmm. So a lot of a lot of high schools now, a lot of Catholic high schools have uh, retreat weekends, and those are very significant for people. So if you can get your young person to a retreat like that, that would be great. Okay. What advice, last advice that you would have for anybody who is considering i mean it's it's kind of late we still have like 12 days remaining but in their preparation for advent for the coming of the lord in their hearts um those who have struggled with um certain things those who are undergoing difficulties health issues what advice would you give them with their preparation for advent well i like i said i think the most important thing is to be with the lord to pay attention to him so I would encourage people who are going through troubles or difficulties to bring them to the Lord. And uh, every prayer we, we pray, he hears. Yeah. He doesn't always answer them as soon as we want them to be answered or in the way that we would like them answered. But he hears our prayers. He hears the cries of our hearts. And when the time is right, in the way that's best for us and at the time that's best for us, he'll give us the answer. It may not be the answer we were expecting. It may not be the answer that we told him we wanted but he's going to hear the cry of our heart. So bring the cry of our heart to the Lord. But that, that gets back to taking some time each day. I would recommend that people first thing in the morning, after they get up, maybe have a cup of coffee or whatever, and just take some time before you look at your phone, before you check your email, before you get into the activity of the day, just take some time to be quiet before the Lord. That's great. Where can people find you online, Ralph? And where can they find your books and um, yeah. get in touch with you? Yeah. Well, I've got a book out right now called The Church in Crises, Pathways Forward, that talks about a lot of the things we're facing right today. Mm -hmm. Confusion in the culture, confusion in the world, confusion in the church. And that's called The Church in Crises, Pathways Forward. You can get it on Amazon. I have another book called The Fulfillment of All Desire a guidebook for the journey to God based on the wisdom of the saints. And it's the best wisdom the Catholic Church has from the greatest saints about how to grow in the spiritual life. And so that's also available uh, on Amazon. We have a website, renewalministries.net. Uh, we do a weekly podcast, a YouTube channel video uh, that we try to use to encourage people. And people can go to Renewal Ministries. YouTube or Ralph Martin YouTube and find that. So there's just lots of ways that people can, we can help encourage and strengthen people. Okay, great. Do you also do uh, like uh, church retreats and things like that? 
We do. Yes, we do. I just uh, spoke last week at uh, uh, the mother house of the Felician sisters that run Madonna University here in Michigan. And mm -hmm. on Friday, I'll be going to Washington, D.C. to speak to the student body at Avalon School. And yeah, we do things like that all the time. Okay, great. So thank you so much for uh, doing this episode this month. It's a short notice. I'm really, really grateful that you could come on. Thank you so much, Ralph. Well, thank you, Pamela, for what you're doing, trying to encourage people and spread the faith.